Hello and greetings to all you fans of RPGs and of Dungeons and Dragons. On behalf of RPG Mods fan, I will be narrating most of this video. This video will be a walkthrough and review of the first adventure in the Candlekeep Mysteries Anthology book. The book itself was published by Wizards of the Coast in January of 2021. This fifth edition D&D adventure is titled The Joy of Extra Dimensional Spaces. It was written by Michael Pokinghorn and is meant for first level player characters. The player characters are from an unnamed village that has been cursed. They are tasked to go to Candlekeep and seek the aid of a sage named Matrius. To us, a better start would be that the player characters were hired as guards for a merchant caravan on its way to Candlekeep. Along their way, they came across the cursed village who begged for the player characters to seek Matrius's aid in lifting the curse. Why would we recommend making this change? A. It allows the players more freedom in creating and crafting their backgrounds. And B. Makes the adventure less railroady. Actually, the adventure does offer an alternative start. In the alternative version, the player characters are already in Candlekeep doing research. During their research, they come across the book titled The Joy of Extra Dimensional Spaces. Whichever version the dungeon master uses, the adventure assumes that the player characters are already in Candlekeep, so that it is easy for the dungeon master to tie them into the story, as well as finding the book of the adventure. The avowed, who are effectively Candlekeep's librarians, have escorted the characters to Matrius's rented private study room. The initial adventure hook for the player characters differs than the one they will actually be embarking on. Hence, at this point, only dungeon masters who will run this adventure should be watching the rest of this video. Hello, my name is Alrond. I am the former Keeper of Tomes. Some time ago, the task of governing Candlekeep has been turned over to the Archmage Janusi. Anyway, my assistant, RPG Modsfan, will now be discussing the adventure itself, and this video will contain spoilers. Unless you are a dungeon master who will be running this adventure for their players, or are a player who already played through this adventure and are watching this video for nostalgia purposes, I would suggest not to watch the rest of this video. Like most of the adventures in Candlekeep Mysteries, the joy of extra-dimensional spaces did not include an adventure overview or summary. Candlekeep Mysteries would have benefited having an adventure overview for each of its adventures. In essence, the joy of extra-dimensional spaces is a fun, escape-room-like adventure that will challenge a party of first-level characters as they must face animated objects, fierce fiends, and mischievous fairy dragons. The player characters start on a mission to save a village from a curse by seeking the aid of a sage named Matrius who resides in Candlekeep. However, when they arrive, they find that Matrius has vanished after tinkering with a magical tome titled The Joy of Extra Dimensional Spaces. The player characters then enter Fistandia's mansion, which is a permanent Morton Canaan's magnificent mansion, where they find the sage. Matrius tasks the player characters to explore the mansion. After Matrius exits, the magical gateway to the mansion then closes, trapping the player characters in the mansion. They must now find clues on how to escape the mansion. The joy of extra-dimensional spaces is more of a problem and puzzle, solving adventure, and is relatively light on combat. The joy of extra-dimensional spaces is more of an event-based adventure. As mentioned in the prior section of this video, the background of the adventure is that the player characters are from a cursed unnamed village. They are tasked to go to Candlekeep to get Matrius to lift the curse. The adventure itself starts at Candlekeep. The avowed escort the characters to Matrius's rented private study room. However, Matrius is absent, but there are several books here, including the Joy of Extra-Dimensional Spaces book. This same room was once rented by the Archmage, Vistandia. She was able to create a permanent version of the Morton Canaan's Magnificent Mansion spell. The gateway to the mansion is accessed from this room. Opening a gateway to the mansion requires a command word, which is scribbled in the margins of the Joy of Extra-Dimensional Spaces book. However, this same command word cannot be used to open the gateway from the mansion. Another command word is required. Once the player characters enter the gateway and are in the mansion, they will meet Matrius at the foyer of the mansion. Matrius casts a concentration spell that, for now, keeps the gateway open. In his hand is a figurine of an imp that he found in the mansion. He informs the characters that he can keep the gateway open from the other side. A devious dungeon master may wish not to mention this so as to not arouse suspicion unless the characters ask the right questions to Matrius. 
In any case, Matrius requests the party to explore the mansion for him, before he can offer his aid in lifting the village's curse. Matrius then exits the mansion. The imp figurine he took with him turns into a real imp and kills him. The gateway slams shut, trapping the player characters in the mansion. The next event is for the characters to search the mansion and find clues of the command word that open the gateway from this side. Throughout the mansion there are seven books, each with a single golden gilded letter on its spine. When placed next to each other, in the proper order, they spell liberty. If the DM has the game of Scrabble, he or she may wish to hand out the appropriate letters as the characters discover the books. When a character says liberty in the foyer, the gateway will open, leading back to the study room. At the study room, the characters will find Matrius's dead body. The imp is invisible and hiding in a corner. It will attack the party upon entering into the room, making this fight the final boss battle of the adventure. Displayed on the screen is the map of Fistandia's mansion. The map is probably easier to decipher, with the rooms labeled as it is now. The one thing that annoys me about this map is the exercise room being right between the library and the study. In my opinion the library and study should be right next to each other. Hence, I would swap the exercise room with one of the other two rooms. The locations of the books with a single gilded letter on their spines are now displayed on the screen. When the player characters arrive, they will first be at the foyer of the mansion. Along with bookshelves, there are also several piles of books on the floor in the library. One of the heaps of books is a swarm of animated books, which will initiate battle with the party. In a few rooms of the mansion, the characters will encounter cats. If the characters do not show interest in a cat that is in a room, the cat then loses interest and heads to the kitchen to get some food. In the kitchen are two homunculi, named Cumin and Coriander. The homunculi have not had contact with humanoids for quite some time and, hence, are eager to serve. Characters who are very knowledgeable in Arcana will know that a mage can create only one homunculus at a time and that the homunculus dies when its master dies. Freyd is a mage, colleague, and friend of Fistandia. The homunculi were created in the alchemical laboratory, which is located on the lower level. When questioned, the homunculi can give quite a bit of information and lore about the mansion, including that their masters have been away for a long time. A potential plot hole is why would the homunculi not know of the command word to exit the mansion? Maybe they do not want to see the characters leave. In the dining room are seven chairs. However, one of the chairs is really a mimic. Invisible and flying around in the arboretum are two playful but mischievous fairy dragons. On the upper level is the planetarium. There are five telescopes and a crystal sphere in this room. Once the door is shut, an illusion of a starry night is visible in all directions. As a DM, I would give your players an image of a night sky and ask them what they do. If the characters point the five telescopes to the five brightest stars, then the secret door to the chained library opens. Here, there is a single bookshelf with a reading desk filled with chained books. The animated chained library is supposed to attack anyone coming near it. Instead, I would make it attack anyone trying to unchain the books, rip out pages, or take any of its books out of its reach. Here is the perfect opportunity for dungeon masters to give clues and or lore for the next adventure they plan to run for their players. Likewise, if the DM is running an overarching campaign, here is the perfect opportunity to provide the players with knowledge and lore about the campaign, the villains, and the world. A generous DM can even have a chained spellbook that mages can copy spells from. On the lower level in the summoning room is a quasit in toad form waiting to attack anyone. The menagerie is the final room in the mansion. It contains preserved specimens of creatures that Fistandia was examining. Currently, there are two threats in this room. One is a slot tadpole in a jar. The other are four severed hands that have absorbed enough magical energy to become four crawling claws. In an interview, the author, Michael Pokinghorn, stated that, when conceiving this adventure, he remembered the classic D&D module, X2, Castle Amber. He stated that, Castle Amber was basically one giant escape room. Where the player characters are stuck in a mansion, full of strange people, where weird magical things are happening, and, they have to figure their way back to reality. In his story, the mystery is the mansion itself. By the way, on RPG Mods fans channel, there is a walkthrough and review video of the X2 module. So, for those who are curious please, check it out. However, Michael does not resolve all the mysteries of the mansion and leaves a number of loose threads that the DM can use for further adventures. What will the characters do to save the village now that Matrius is dead? Maybe they can find another sage in Candlekeep who can lift the curse. 
alternatively, they may undertake new quests to earn enough money to have Matrius raised from the dead. What about Vistandia and Freyd? Where are they? How would they react if they returned and found that the player characters are squatting in their home? Candlekeep Mysteries was conceived to have 17 standalone adventures but not be an overarching campaign. However, the fourth adventure, titled, A Deep and Creeping Darkness, could be tied to this adventure. In A Deep and Creeping Darkness adventure, there is a cursed mountain village called Vermaelon. With some tweaking, the DM can have the cursed village in both adventures be the same. I think the joy of extra-dimensional spaces is a very good adventure. Most level 1 adventures have the player characters fighting rats, kobolds, or some other weak things. However, the joy of extra-dimensional spaces teaches players that D&D is more than just combat. This adventure places emphasis on problem and puzzle solving. Okay. Back to you RPG Mods fan. Thank you for watching. Hope this video has been informative and entertaining. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. I do like feedback. Till next time, this is RPG Mods fan saying cheers. Have a good day, and goodbye. There is a place.